Hey guys, it's Kelly and today, so excited to bring you a 2021 Land Rover Discovery Tour. This tour is extra special because I've actually been driving this car for a few days now because Land Rover sent me a press car. Thank you, Land Rover. I'll take any, anytime. Send it my way. So that being said, I've actually driven this car for a couple days as a mom with two young kids and rear facing car seats. So I have a lot of thoughts to share about it. I am super excited. If this is your first time joining me, hey, I'm Kelly and I'm the car mom. I review cars for moms and for families. I am a car salesman, a mother, and a certified child passenger safety tech. So with all that, I'm here to bring you an amazing tour of this Land Rover Discovery. Quick disclaimer, if you're wondering if this car can go off-roading, I don't know, I heard it could. I'm not gonna do that though. We are going to talk about cup holders, car seats, and everything in between because I am the car mom and that is what I do. Let's start with the front grille. Very sporty. I love that this is all blacked out in this trim level. We've got some beautiful, like futuristic kind of headlights with this cute, like little dotted pattern. Really, really nice body lines. They're very round. It's not a lot of sharp angles, but I think the car looks amazing. It sits up higher, which I'll get to that in a second. It seems like such a large SUV, right? Let's move to the side. I mean, the wheels could not be more stunning. Could not be more stunning. I love the Discovery badging right here. Kind of nondescript, not too far out there, but it's there nonetheless. Some great, like, I'm gonna call it like a faux roof rail because it's kind of trying to give it like that sportier look, but obviously there's nothing there. Cute little Girl Scout badge right there. So stinking cute, obsessed. Back end is the only thing where I'm like, ugh, but it's my car, so I wouldn't have to look at the back end very often. This drives me absolute bonkers. This should be centered. I just like can't handle the fact that this isn't centered. Some people I think like that. I think it kind of gives it more of like a rugged army vehicle kind of vibe, but like I'm just here for symmetry because like nothing else in my life is in control. So like I'd like my license plate to be centered. So exterior smacks, I'm here for it. Let me know what you think of the exterior. Let's talk about the interior. Wow. Well, up here, wow. The door panel, beautiful. This amazing like textured white leather. I am so here for it. Side cubbies. Things to talk about, simple modern water bottle, great water bottle, doesn't really work. That works and that works well, like that is secure. So that's exciting stuff. Door panel besides that kind of basic. Like the cubby space, it's all good. Moving on into the interior, it is so luxurious, so gorgeous, so sporty. I love my two-toned leather to be honest with you. I think it's amazing. The digital display is absolutely beautiful. She's so upset that I don't have my seatbelt on or that someone doesn't. She has a lot to say. She's very vocal. She'll let you know how she feels. Um, let's get you on the inside and we'll talk about some more of the features. Okay guys, come on in. It's feeling good in here. Interior. I really love, love, love the design. It's very minimalistic, but very sporty, but luxurious. It just, I love it. If I said digital display, I still love that. Steering wheel controls, awesome. Heads up display. If you don't know what heads up display is, things display while I keep my head up, meaning that they are displayed onto the windshield. So you can't see it, but I can see it. I see that I'm in park, I see the speed limit is 30, and I see that I'm going zero miles per hour. Love that, because I don't take my eyes off the road. Moving into the display, so stinking cute. Navigation, phone, media, wow. That's so fancy. Underneath here, well, there's lots more to talk about. Let's first talk about the hidden cubbies in this car, because they are a lot. You're like, what's this do, Kelly? Oh, just gives me a secret cubby to put things. I feel like this little sunglass holder. Cute, but you didn't know that existed. Here's something kind of weird, the climate control. So I'm like, how do I turn up the fan? How do I turn up the temperature? How do I turn on my heated seats? Everything's so confusing. You push to turn your seats on, and then you pull to control the fan speed, which is just like strange. So I pull, okay, I control my fan speed. I push, now I can control the temperature. I push again, I can control my heated seats. Just like kind of weird. So it's like, it takes some getting used to for sure. Moving on into our cup holders. I think this is really beautiful actually. Look at this. So clean and minimal. How many times can I say minimalist before it gets annoying? Am I there? Comment below if I'm there. So nice and sleek. In here we have two more cubbies. 
I'm sure in some of the higher trims, these are wireless chargers, not the one that they sent me. At least I can't get it to work. A USB-C is right here. We move into some cup holders and let's check this out. Another secret freaking cubby. Another cubby. And a deep cubby. Like that's really deep. Look at that. Swallows my arm. Oh, here we go. That's exciting. Okay, nonetheless, how are these cup holders? They're good. They're kind of weird actually. Like this one's so much more smaller than this one. It does also have the phone holder, which I love to see right here. Let's move over to the center console. Don't know what this is for. The most shallow thing I've ever seen. So like obviously I would never use that. So I would have to click it all the way up and then we move into a pretty good size center console. Two USBs right here, a very deep center console, kind of narrow, but like, I mean, my arm just gets lost. It just swallows my arm. Panoramic sunroof, absolutely beautiful. So excited to show you the back seat though because they do something kind of cute with the pano sunroof. So yeah, I'm living large up here. I'm obsessed with the interior. I feel so fabulous in it. But you're here to talk about car seats and let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is this car seat installed in the middle because it didn't fit behind me. Meet me in the back seat. Okay, so here's a shot of me in the second row of the Land Rover Discovery. A um, couple things to talk about. This car seems huge on the outside. Now, I am a mom with two huge car seats. I have a rear-facing convertible and a rear-facing pumpkin seat. So I get that like maybe this car wasn't made for me in mind, but that's what we're here to talk about. I could not fit my son's rear-facing car seat behind me with any sort of comfort. Um, so since me and my husband drive together a lot, me and my husband are both tall, I had to put my son's seat in the middle. So it's fine, it's working okay for me. I don't mind that he's in the middle, but just something to be aware of, like three rear-facing car seats doesn't really work. Now my daughter's pumpkin seat does fit pretty decently with the seat set for myself. It's not a ton of room though. I think I'm just surprised because on the road and from the outside, this car feels so huge, but then I just don't totally know where all the space goes because it's a little crammed. The bench just isn't very wide. As you can see, this is a shot of me in the third row or in the second row. And I mean, it would be very difficult to buckle here safely. I feel like I'm kind of crammed right here. So I don't ever want to say like three acrosses aren't possible. With the car seat combination I brought today, I don't feel very confident about it. But if you have any questions, I would always suggest you contact a certified child passenger safety tech. So as far as the hardware is concerned, we've got two sets of lower anchors on either outboard seat in this bench, tether anchors across this bench, and tether anchors in the third row. So a lot of tether anchors to chat about, um, but I don't really know how you fit all these car seats because like I said, it is tight. Another thing to note is the headrests are not removable. So make sure that you feel good about your installation with the headrest included because that can obviously complicate things depending on your car seat. First of all, sunshades don't exist. They should exist. Down here, we've got some decent side cubbies right here, pretty deep. I've got some pockets, which could hold absolutely nothing. I can recline the second row from right here, which is kind of nice. Obviously, you know, I've got car seats installed, but like for your second row passengers, that's kind of a fun amenity. I've got, this is exciting, ceiling vents. Look what they did here. I love this Land Rover. This was a great idea. This was a great idea. Other people need to take note. Sunroof here, sunroof there, a place for a ceiling vent. That works. That's super fun, right? I'm so excited about that. I'm also excited about this, a USB right there. So you could like charge your device right there and like hold it. Ah, that's so fun. There's also two more USB-Cs and a USB down there. We've got our own climate control. We've got all the things. So amenities back here, pretty good. Just a little tight for car seats. Okay, so this is my daughter Hattie's um, Kleck Ling infant seat, rear facing. So as you can see, I do have enough clearance here. It's gonna depend on what specific seats that you have, obviously. And this seat I ride with the bar facing up, so all good there. This seat set for myself, I have clearance. I would feel more comfortable with a little bit more clearance, but it works. So, did you know this car is a third row? I don't know how I'm gonna get to it because I've got car seats installed, but, and I'm in a dress. So let's turn the camera off and I'll meet you in the third row. Okay, so here's how we had to enter through the third row. Here's what I like about this car. There's only two seats. So they're not like trying to be like, no, fit a third. It's like, no, let's be realistic. Let's appreciate our second or third row drivers and only give them two seats. So I like that. The seats are really comfortable. They honestly feel like the same seats that are in the second row. I love that. I don't feel like I'm stuck to have these like little baby jump seats. Knee clearance, good. Good knee clearance. I'm pretty comfortable overall. I've got good head clearance. Vents, not on the ceiling, but they're right here, so that's still good for ventilation. Um, my amenities are kind of weird. Like, I don't really have any, to, honestly, to ride home about. No cup holders, no USBs. But I'm pretty comfortable. I mean, for in a pinch in a third row, I'm comfy. Now, what I don't love is, spoiler alert, this is the trunk with the third row up. I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. This is the shelf with the third row up. 
So did I bring my stroller to show you? No, because it's not going to fit. It's tiny, tiny, tiny trunk, but that's all I have to say about that. One thing I'm loving about this car is that it's just figured it out. The second row talks to the third row. The third row talks to the second row. Here's how they talk. If I wanted to move this seat forward, let's, or this, bring this seat back up, instead of being like, oh shoot, now I gotta move that, just, no, we're not doing that. If I wanna move this seat up, it moves those seats forward automatically for me. And then it moves them back. It's a freaking time saver. I'm a busy mom. If I've gotta put the third row up, I don't wanna have to walk around in my car just to put that row up. I need that to be automated. So the fact that that's automated, Land Rover, is a point to you, I love that. Again, here's the trunk, sorry, here's the shelf. It's okay, because with both these seats down, it's plenty of trunk space. Let's put both of them down. You see what I mean? With both of these seats down, this is a kick-ass trunk. Can I cuss on YouTube? No. This truck, trunk, kicks butt. <laughs> this is a great size trunk. Very happy to see this. So. I think it depends on your use and functionality of the car. Do I think this is a car made for a family of seven? No, absolutely not. Do I think you can feel sassy, put a car seat or two in it? 100%. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the drive. So I am absolutely in love with the drive of this vehicle. It drives very similarly, similarly? Drives like a BMW. BMWs are my favorite driving cars and this car totally compares to a car like the X5. It is such a performance vehicle. I love the acceleration. I love the handling. The drive is uh, amazing. You know, do I think it fits a ton of car seats? No, no, I don't. Do I think it fits me as just a person? Yeah, I love this car. Would I buy this car with two kids? Fortunately, no. Will I maybe buy this car one day when I, my kids are older? Yes. Does that answer your question? No? Well, it's the best I can do. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and then comment below which car I should tour next. All right, everyone, let's build my very own 2021 Land Rover Discovery. So the first option you have to choose from is just the regular Discovery or the R Dynamic. Now the R Dynamic for the most part, is just cosmetic upgrades. So I'm not gonna go up in price and I'm just gonna stick with the base. So let's look at this one. Obviously just select the engine that it comes with. And then here's everything I'm getting, beautiful. So all looks good, lots of great standard safety features and then hit select. And then we get into some paint colors. Um, so the white is no upcharge. Everything else seems to be around $710, which is kind of a lot. Um, I actually like the white, oh, I like the black too. I think I'm gonna like all the colors is the problem. Don't love, I think that's the color I had. Oh, that's cute. Let's see what the gray looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I'm gonna go with the black. And it looks really, really sharp. All right, now let's go into our interior. I'm gonna stick with black interior because kids, and I think that's best for me. Um, going into options, there's a couple of other additional packages we can add. So like I'm obviously gonna add this cold climate package for 600 bucks because I want a heated windshield and a heated steering wheel. Not gonna add any of that. Adaptive cruise control, yeah, I want that. Any other convenience features I need? Okay, so this is like, the power tailgate's there, but it's, what the heck is this? Activity key? Like, what is this possibly showing? What is this doing? Oh, it's a wristband. I don't have time for that. I don't want to wear that. Anyway, that would bring my Land Rover Discovery to an MSRP of 57.8, which is actually lower than the one I test drove, except then you go down here. So it looks pretty good. It's actually pretty affordable for a Land Rover, all things considered.